How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about my solar hybrid inverter system with 20 kilowatt of batteries. It's kind of like a work in progress. I had an inverter that's a bit smaller before. I first used one that was three kilowatts. It wasn't very good. It couldn't charge from the wall. I couldn't get it to work. And then I got a orange one that was an eco worthy as well. And it's three kilowatt. It turns out it wasn't big enough to power the whole house because it was also 24 volts as well. This one is a five kilowatt version, 48 volt, and it can also do split phase. So I can buy another one and create 220 volts. My electricity bill typically is between $100 and $200 per month. I'm in Northern California. I have PG&E per kilowatt hour is 43 cents over here. This entire home uses about seven kilowatts per day. You do the math, it's around $90 for the base amount if I don't do anything special. And since installing this thing myself, I don't have the solar panels on a roof or anything. And so it's all DIY. The cost is relatively much, much cheaper than if you have an installer do it for you and you get like 20 year ROI, less than 10 year ROI over here. The next bill with an entire month with this thing online is about $20. There is a minimum charge on your PG&E bill and I've hit this limit before because I went on vacation and I like just basically turned everything off including the refrigerator. When I use next to no electricity at all, they actually charged me a minimum electricity charge. The bill was still around $20. If you look on their website, they say there's a minimum delivery charge of $10.15 or so, but in practice for some reason or whatnot, it's around $20. So I try to always use about $20 worth of electricity. This video is brought to you by Moomoo, the commission free trading app. It's one of the brokerages accounts that I keep around to do a little bit of research on stocks. You can get a bunch of free shares just for signing up and depositing various amounts of money. If you guys are interested, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Rough cost estimate here, this is about $1,000. You might be able to get it for a little bit cheaper depending on the sales they have currently. There's a 20 kilowatt battery system here. Each of these is 12 volts. So it's a 2P 4S system, two in parallel, and you stack four of them on top of each other. So there's eight batteries total. And each of these 200 amp hour 12 volt battery is around $500. That's the market rate for one of these. Depending on the brand, it might vary between 400 or $550 or so. These are actually 200 amps each. So if I wire it properly, I can actually do 20 kilowatt output at any given time. This is a five kilowatt. That means I can have four of these in parallel. And I think 20 kilowatt is basically if I turn everything I know in the house on, turn on the dryer, all four stove, but realistically, I probably don't need that much power at any given moment. Five kilowatt is actually plenty for me. Currently it's wired only for a hundred amps. So it can only do five kilowatts right now. It's also internet connected. So there's this little cable over here and there's a Wi-Fi module here. Right now I'm generating 1.1 kilowatt of solar. The battery state is around 66%. I think the readout is actually not very reliable on mine actually, it always reads somewhere between 60 to 68% or so. So I probably need to figure that out and how to calibrate it. So right now I'm using 178 watts and this thing has been online about six weeks, two months or so, and I've generated 277 kilowatt hours. 277 times 43 cents. We got about $120 generated just from a month and a half or so. I anticipate this is gonna generate about a thousand dollars worth of electricity every year. It also has charts over here. I can zoom into that. I have one desk setup that my girlfriend is using off of this power cable. My desk setup, it's coming off of this power cable. The lights I'm using right now, it's coming off of this cable right here. This one is powering my refrigerator. I had an old refrigerator before. It was a Kenmore Elite that I bought from Sears and it tends to be on the old side. It used to use about 100 watts per hour, but I think it really, really broke down. So it started consuming around 110 watts per hour, which is equivalent to about 2.6 kilowatt hour per day. Keep in mind, I only use around seven per day. So this is 33% of my entire usage. So I got a new refrigerator. Now it's using about 45 watts per hour on average. If you know, nothing happens, if you don't open the fridge or anything. So it's gone down from 
2.6 kilowatt per day all the way down to one kilowatt per day. I also have this Emporia energy monitoring system on my grid power, which right now I'm using about 22 watts on the per second plot, on the minute plot, per hour plot. On average per day, I'm doing about 1.6, 1.7 kilowatt hour per day. That's down from seven kilowatts. That's on purpose because every day it's using about what, 70 cents per day. And if you multiply that out by 30, it's actually about $21, which is the minimum that you have to pay on a PG&E electric bill. This is the grid power going into this whole system. Notice it's not connected. It hasn't been connected for the past, you know, as long as I had this because I always get more solar because it's summer than I actually use. I try to not load it so much that it's gonna drain it completely. But even if there's no sun for three or four days, this entire pack can supply me, supply whatever I have plugged in here for three or four days straight. In fact, the system has been producing a little bit more than I need. So when I fill this up a little bit too much, I would dump all that electricity into my car. Every two weeks or so, I charge my car about 30 miles. Solar is coming in from here. I have a circuit breaker. I have to admit I need a uh, lightning arrestor. We don't get too much lightning over here in California, but you know, just as a safety precaution, that's something I plan to add in the future. We're actually in the second floor. We're in my electronics room. I figure I concentrate all this crazy mess. It's a bit dangerous over here, adults only. So if you have kids around, I might look for putting all of this contained within a cage of some kind and then you lock it. My plans are going forward is to relocate this entire thing into the garage next to my main panel. I'm gonna have a sub panel, pull a lot of circuits off of that and have this exclusively power the house as many circuits as it can support. If it needs more electricity, then it would pull electricity off of this wire from the grid. So none of this actually requires any kind of HOA approval or approval from PG&E because this is not a grid tie system. It's just using power from the grid. And all of this is actually off grid right now. I have my fridge, my desktop system, my girlfriend's desktop system, all off grid for over six weeks now. It's not even draining the battery. Let's talk cost over here. We got $4,000 worth of batteries over here. The rack, is pretty cheap, like $50. All these fuses and cables and stuff, it's probably runs around three to $500 or so. You need a class T fuse when there is some short circuit and an enormous amount of current wants to flow. This will break an enormous amount of current. I think it's around 20,000 amps maximum. That is in the case that you know, the output of this thing shorts. It has a huge spike of current from the battery and this will break all of that, keeping your battery safe and keeping anything from overheating and exploding. Looking from the same room down, I have eight 200 watt solar panels. Those four on the right are grid tie and I actually consume more electricity than the grid tie and they produce about 1.2 kilowatt to 1.6 kilowatt per day. The 220 watt solar panel at the bottom connects to a separate battery system. My Emporia monitoring system actually will turn on a couple of smart plugs if there is excess solar generated from the grid tie system. Excess solar management, and then it's enabled and it has four of the smart plugs that are connected to a bunch of batteries that can suck up excess solar from those four panels. So I got a separate system here that kind of supplements what I need. Those in turn power different things like my home entertainment system with a TV and a light. It also powers things like a little induction stove, the microwave, my coffee maker. Here's my daily solar generation. If I put a marker over it, it's around 6.97 kilowatt per day. Just yesterday, I generated 6.4 kilowatt hour. What you get is not exactly what you get to use. There's a little bit of inefficiency for charging the battery and a bit of inefficiency for taking it back out because the inverter has some inefficiencies as well. About 10% going in and another 15, 20% coming out. So from seven kilowatts of solar generation, after I store it in the battery, take it back out and stuff, I'm only gonna be able to use about five kilowatts of it. So because the house uses seven kilowatts, 
or probably around six now, now that I got a more efficient refrigerator. I have five per day from this, one from the grid tie, and probably another 0.6 or 0.7 from the 220 watt solar panel that goes into separate batteries. So I'm gonna generate roughly $1,000 of electricity. I would have paid the utility company. So this is one year and I'll make this inverter back. Two of these batteries, another year, second year, third year, fourth year, five years. The solar panels, I got eight of them. So it's $200 each, $2,000, let's say, right? So six years, seven years. There are some infrastructure such as the stilts that I built them on, the lumber that I bought in order to put them on stilts. That's probably another thousand dollars altogether, you know, wiring, screws and all that. It's going to be about eight to 10 years ROI for all of this. Here's a better look at it. It's kind of like a pergola. I got these little brackets that are at four corners. Is it sturdy enough? It could be sturdier. I could reinforce it um, at the four corners over here with extra bars of lumber. So each one of these are 200 watts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're strung in series because my inverter requires a high voltage. And this is the minimum number. I think seven is the minimum to connect to that. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. It's something I've been working on. I'm very, very excited about all this. I just look at this app every single day and I'm like, yes, free money, free electricity coming in. And you have the peace of mind that if the grid ever goes out, life proceeds as normal. Even my fridge is gonna be fully powered by this battery system, I can almost go completely off grid and not use the utility at all. But it's good to keep it because sometimes you get like a long streak of no sun. There's like storms, like in the winter, there's no sun. So it's still good to keep it at $20 a month, a bit of a security. And it's actually not $20 a month. In California, there's this utility credit thing. They give you $55 two times a year. So it's really only $130 per year to keep your grid power going. So it's like $10 a month. Really, really great just to keep that around. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like and check out that Moomoo thing. Get yourself some free shares. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <music>